you guys welcome to another video and today's topic it's gonna be about dogs in china so today right now here at the time i'm recording this video is 21st of june of 2019 and if you are quite familiar with china subjects or perhaps animal cruelty or you know activism in general you might happen to know that this is the date that the festival of yulin is taking place in china so this year i didn't hear much about it compared to previous years and i've been living in china for the past 10 years so actually i have this story of a friend of mine who confessed me that he had eaten dog meat before a foreigner yeah living in china actually is from south america and he told me that he suffered from some coldness in the body and he will feel like not comfortable every time he will go to all kind of doctors and take all kinds of medicines and nothing will work for him but he said like once he was uh, in a business trip down in the province of Guangxi in the south of China and he was offered this uh, dog meat broth somehow they told him like this will cure him from his coldness in the body or dampness or uh, he was just feeling like cold sweat coming out of his body and he will not feel like full of energy, he will feel lethargic, etc. Supposedly he took this uh, dog meat broth and after a few weeks he was relieved from all those, you know. I just want to tell you that a lot of Chinese people who consume this dog meat are believers that this dog meat is, is used to treat the body and this dog meat will give them heat because the dog meat is supposed to be very hot so if you will consume this meat uh, you will fool your body with that heat and therefore you will be stronger etc so this is just one case and that's what he told me this story of a foreign friend consuming dog meat i think it's not very common amongst foreigners i've been into a korean uh, restaurant back in the days when i was in uh, shenzhen uni Perhaps if you're listening to this story, you have been to Shenzhen Uni as well. And there is this a popular Korean restaurant in front of the uni behind a Starbucks. It's quite popular amongst foreigners because it's quite cheap. So that was when I was a student. Actually, I didn't really got to meet someone whenever we went to that restaurant who will order dog meat or perhaps I was not aware of it. But I will just always happen to go with my you know, Latin friends and they will order some novels or soup or whatever thing that it was common on the menu. But when I discovered that they will offer dog soup, dog meat, I stopped um, visiting that place. And yeah, that was my story from Shenzhen Uni. I would like to know if you have another story. Um, if you have been living in China and you have a story related to this subject please let us know in the comment section because i think it's quite interesting to have a feedback from each other since our experiences have been different perhaps you are living in another province i'm living in shenzhen and they have somehow other habits other eating habits so just be aware that there are so many caring loving people in china as well as in the outside of china and do not attack like oh chinese people do this in regard of like you know animal cruelty because it's well it's quite well known that oh chinese lack of compassion towards animals but just be aware that um saying chinese people is like stereotyping all of them and you can find very caring and loving people back in china these dogs come from uh, uh, or rescued uh, by volunteers you are a volunteer also yeah, one mouth. Wow. Here we have this organization which is rescuing cats and dogs from the street. And I thought that it was very cute that they even had their own shirt, like this red t shirt, to be recognized as the volunteers working inside this org. And you can see as well that we can even get to scan the code easily if we would like to be part of them. Just in case you are interested, you can scan it as well, pause the video, and you know screenshot scan these were the dogs that were being displayed that day to be adopted and they were looking very happy and healthy they even had water and food for them there just in case they will get hungry or thirsty because it was super hot you know shenzhen weather
So as you can see, all the cages here are empty because all the cats that were on display to be adopted have been adopted and there is this new owner of this little cat being super lovely to his new pet and the rest of the dogs that are remaining are here still waiting for an owner to come and they look super cute and they really touch my heart, you know? Because they look like really well behaved dogs and you know, you always want to take one home. They were moving their tails, all happy and looking very healthy, by the way. Hello? Hello. Can you speak English? <laughs> Hello, how old are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you happy now you have a dog? Yes. You like to play with dog? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So we have this beautiful girl over here with us and very happy because she will share with us some very valuable information regarding dogs in China and street dogs and whatsoever. Here we have Pudding! Hello beautiful one! Oh, she likes camera. Okay, so tell us more about you and what is that you do regarding rescuing some pets here in China. Okay, hi, I'm Melanie, I'm German and I've been in China for about six years and came across my first doggy back in Zhuhai. Uh, we just took, this one was a quick rescue, took it home, found a new home very quick, didn't do much. But then I moved to Guangzhou and started finding cats in the streets because there's a lot of kitties here in the streets of China. And the first one I kept, my little baby at home now, have been, have it for, have had it for like three or four years now. And what I usually do is just me, not organization or anything, picking up strays in the street. Uh, like the new one, this is Pudding. Oh, which we kept for almost two yeah, months she when she was here. small and very spoiled. <laughs> She's and very nice girl now, getting bigger. Yeah. And what I try to do is find them good homes, either cats or dogs. And I, if possible, I send them abroad. The last doggie I had, I sent her to Germany. She lives with my sister now very very spoiled puppy getting her own doggy ice cream and everything and this one will be going to germany too so she's leaving for christmas yes christmas already, gift yeah gonna get a bow on her, around her neck and be a christmas present she already got a family waiting for her why do you choose to send them abroad instead of christmas? um well I, I i don't know i have more trust in the society abroad like you can be a very very good pet owner in china but it's just very dangerous for the dogs and cats in china they get lost or if they if there's bad people around they get stolen and then they get sent back on a meat truck you know, even if you, you it's not your fault it's your pet and you love it there's bad people around and there's bad people abroad too but at least they're not gonna steal your pet and eat it so yeah it sounds okay. harsh but so tell us truth. more about the stealing and the eating um, parts so, that we most know about yeah, the Yulin so, festival so in Yulin and all around the year actually in China dogs are being slaughtered for meat and while eating dog meat might be okay here for people it's where the dogs come from there's no meat farms for dogs in China so none of the dogs that end up on the plate are actually farmed for meat They're all yeah stolen. Some, some people some of my followers were like hey China has its own farms and it's no, not they like don't. they will steal from their uh, homes and pets no, they're stolen pets they're stolen strays there are a lot of them are sold by their owners they're old service wow. service dogs police and military that are no longer of use they're sold to the slaughterhouses some of them are wearing leashes when you get them off the truck and yeah it's just not pretty to see. Yeah. they're all sick so it's really exactly. not good to eat that's they're all of diseases which i've which i've seen like whenever they rescue so many they go, they go to hospitals and they have yeah. all these diseases they all these do. gowns like the skin is open the and skin is horrible they have wounds because they're stuck into these chicken cages five six seven at a time in a tiny cage and yeah sometimes i was like wondering like how would they eat dog because it's our pet but when i saw the dogs were so sick i was even more hesitant yeah like, that's the thing. these dogs should not be eaten because they're sick it's dangerous for for the humans that eat them as well so even if you want to see it from another point of view saying it's a culture but do the people want to get sick because those diseases can be contracted by humans when you eat them so. yeah and how is it that uh, I mean the years, the years have passed and more and more uh, foreign activists are coming to China so how do you see Yulin um, well I I always think for every change in society it has to come from within um, the outside can help, so as foreigners, I'm sure we can help, we can do our part and we can put pressure on whoever's in charge. But 
the big change has to come from inside and there is a lot of Chinese volunteers, extremely amazing volunteers that help and that do put pressure on the government and on the people selling dog meat. It just will take some time. Someone watching this video and would like to get involved somehow helping or rescuing or adopting. Oh, well, if you're in China, just come with your two hands, carry some dog poop. <laughs> Sorry to say it like that. Clean, clean dog poop, feed them, play with them. Um, if you're abroad, get in touch with some of the organizations here or the individual rescuers. They always need donations, they always need supplies, if you can even just send blankets or something, or send the money so they can buy the food they need. Or if you want a doggy, adopt one. There's a lot of contacts on Facebook. And, Thank um, you. Get in touch, ask if you can adopt one, and send help help the doggy get abroad, get okay. a good home. So one, more, one last question, have you ever been in Yulin? No, I haven't and I don't plan to, I don't think I could stop. But you yet. have been with the dogs that have been rescued from yes, there? Yes, I was at the truck side last year where they stopped a huge truck in Guangzhou and it's just, that was already hard to stomach so I don't think I could go and see. Well, thank you very much. Thanks thank a lot for being a helper I hope, here. I hope a lot of people abroad will adopt some of these dogs and cats. Yeah, I <laughs> hope, hope some of you guys can be inspired by this story of this girl rescuing. And until next time, <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe as well to leave me your lovely comments below because I'm gonna be very excited to give you a heart and a reply very very soon. I'll see you on my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you wish become Patreon. Thank you.